good morning and a very warm welcome as we worship together once more. This week and for the next three Sundays I am on holiday and these services have been pre-recorded to allow you to share the service that will actually be used in church with our worship group and I'm grateful to them for agreeing to do that to allow me just a few Sundays without conducting worship. Over the next few weeks we will actually um, look at a number of the hymns of the church. The services are going to be very much in the style of a songs of praise. Today we're spending our time with the ancient psalms, the songs that have been sung for centuries and still bring so much comfort and hope today. It's very reassuring, isn't it, that to realise that these words and concepts have been around for so very long and have spoken to and of God's people through the generations. This is the day that the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. People that on earth do dwell as we know it finds its origins in 1561, more than 450 years ago. It was first in a Scottish hymn book in 1564, very soon after the Reformation. To this day, derived from Psalm 100, it remains a popular and rousing hymn, calling all God's people from every corner of the world to recognise and worship their God. The psalmist wrote, Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our God and Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. Let us pray. Eternal God, if we dare to look carefully and earnestly at your world, we can see your signature written large upon it. Help us in this time of worship to listen for 
to seek out and to discover your handwriting and voice in this place and among your people. Lord, we come to worship you and then we'll rise and go about our ordinary business. Help us to reconnect this time of pausing to the rhythm of our daily living and your timeless rhythms, your ageless melodies, your everlasting joy. Guide us now as we worship you. We confess that as we try to focus on you, our minds wander and we're distracted by so many things. Prompt us to wonder whether these distractions might be you gently prodding showing afresh the possibilities for us to live as your people and serve by being the people we are. As we worship you today, O God, we reach out in word, music, thinking, praying, fellowship with one another and you. May we discover the truth that you have already enfolded us in your arms. And hear us, O God, as we pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The next psalm, Psalm 23, is perhaps one of the best known and best loved hymns of all time. Even for many people with little connection to the church, these words bring comfort and hope. It picks up the theme of God as shepherd and us as the sheep of his flock and develops it into something so much more, giving a sense of God as the all-loving, ever-protective provider. Over the years, the psalm has been adopted in many different sung versions, most notably the paraphrase, The King of Love My Shepherd Is, and Stuart Townsend's Modern, The Lord's My Shepherd. There have also been lots of different tunes written for this hymn, all very beautiful and notable. Here at Tillicutri, we use the tune Crimond almost exclusively. Its origins are slightly hazy and disputed, but possibly it was penned as a competition exercise by Jesse Irvin, whose father was the minister at Crimond.
both Mike and I have spent some of our lives working at sea and in more recent years have continued our love of the sea by going on cruises. Even though we are on holiday as you share in this service, we are certainly not at sea this year. But here's Mike reading Psalm 93 for us. Hear the word of God as it is found in Psalm 93. The Lord reigns, he is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed in majesty and armed with strength. Indeed, the world is established, firm and secure. Your throne was established long ago. You are from all eternity. The seas have lifted up, Lord. The seas have lifted up their voice. The seas have lifted up their pounding waves, mightier than the thunder of the great waters, mightier than the breakers of the sea. The Lord on high is mighty. Your statutes, Lord, stand firm. Holiness adorns your house for endless days. Amen. One of the amazing things about the Psalms is how they pick up on the wonder of a God who had designed things that we would enjoy and appreciate. He truly has created a world of beauty and harmony. And when we try truly stop and think about it, that really becomes obvious. However, we live lives that are full of so many things. Distractions, duties, worries, interests... As we turn back to the Psalms today, we're invited to set these down and reflect on the God who underpins everything and holds both the world and ourselves. Listen to these words written by Malcolm Geit in his book, David's Crown, Sounding the Psalms. And trusting him until the day I die, I will not fear the surging of the sea. The troubles in a flood tide rise so high. Wave after wave of panic surges through me and other people's fear and rage increase my own until the toxic mix is deadly. But when it seems that these troubles never cease, I sense beneath them some solid ground a sure foundation and an inner peace and overarching them the starlit round of heaven's firmament. The wind between the storms of life rage on with all their sound and fury. I still trust that all unseen, founded below and glorious above, My Saviour stands and keeps my soul serene. No consideration of the Psalms would be complete for us without that powerful hymn, Eye to the Hills. Nestled at the foot of the Ochels, the people of the town repeat time and again the strength, the encouragement, the peace they draw from them. They stand as a reminder of continuity and permanence in a world where both of these seem to be in short supply.
Of course, the psalmist is reminding us that we find our defence not in towering hills, but in the creator who brought them into being. God formed the world as a place for us, as a place in which we could flourish and which we could enjoy. We've not always used that creation as well or as wisely as we could, nor have we always sought God and lived in relationship with him as we ought. We reflect on that now and offer ourselves in this time of giving. As we come to God with our prayers of dedication and our prayers for his world and his people, we reflect on Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, she will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations in uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice, the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations he's brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shield with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. In these prayers we will firstly use the words of St Boniface, a first century saint, and then intercessions by a contemporary Christian writer, Abbey. Let us pray. Eternal God, the refuge and help of all your children, we praise you for all you've given us, for all you've done for us, for all that you are to us. In our weakness you are strength, in our darkness you are light, in our sorrow you are comfort and peace. We cannot number your blessings, we cannot declare your love. For all your blessings we bless you. May we live as in your presence and love the things that you love and serve you in our daily lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. God, you are our safe place to hide. You are our mighty fortress. You are our ever-present help in time of need. We can and do turn to you in the midst of our troubles, and Lord, our world is full of difficulties. Lord, we may feel afraid, but it doesn't overcome us because we know we can put our trust in you. Your love and grace are like streams of water in the desert. Your joy comes splashing down upon us. You refresh and renew us like rain coming down on the earth. Bring your water of life to those who are thirsty and living in a dry and weary land. Where there are wars, bring your peace. Where there is starvation, fill the empty bellies. Where there is despair, bring your hope. 
Where there's animosity, bring your reconciliation. Where there is abuse, bring your tender mercies. Where there's poverty, bring your charity. Where there is illness, bring your healing. Where there's grief, bring your gentleness. Where there is injustice, bring your justice. Lord, you are a mighty fortress, our strong deliverer. In you we put our trust and release ourselves into your hands. Amen. We stay with the psalm, Psalm 46, for our last hymn. But moving from the ancient tunes of the church into much more contemporary music, mainly because I couldn't find a sung recording with one of the traditional tunes, so I couldn't use it legally. So we use the tune of the Dambusters March, but as we do, we are reminded that though this tune echoes the themes of war, our God is a mighty God who offers us peace and invites us to walk in its shadow. peace of God go with you as you leave this time of worship and make your way into the ordinariness of your life. May you know, as did those old people of old, that God is indeed our strength, our hope and our salvation. Amen. Amen.